Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off the water supply underneath the sink. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the Whirlpool Refrigerator Defrost Drain Pan. It's going to be a very easy repair and it's only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new defrost drain pan. The defrost drain pan is located in the bottom of the refrigerator and it catches the water from the defrost cycle. The manner you'll be changing it out is if it's lost or damaged and you're getting water leaking on the floor. In order to get to the part, we have to go around to the back of the refrigerator. Now that we're around back, we can take off the excess cover. We're going to use our quarter inch nut driver to take out all the screws. Once you have all the screws out, you can pull the panel down from this lip right here and pull it off the refrigerator. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. Now that we have the cover off, we're going to take out the water valve so we can disconnect the water lines that go up to the filter housing. We're going to use our corner nut driver to take out these two screws. Once you have the screws out, we're going to carefully pull the whole water valve assembly out. Be careful of any water lines. Once you have the water valve out, as far as you can get it, we're going to throw a towel down to catch any water that may come out. And then we're going to disconnect this water line and this water line. We're going to use our 3 inch wrench to push in on the locking collars and then we can pull the water lines out. Once you have the water lines disconnected, we can set the valve down. Then we're going to reach in with a razor blade and carefully cut this piece of blue tape that holds the defrost drain pan down to the bottom of the refrigerator. Once you have the tape cut, we can go around to the front of the refrigerator. Now that we're back around front, we can open up both doors and then we have to take the kick plate off. To remove the kick plate, there's a locking tab on each side, so we're just going to grab each end and Release the tab. Once you have it off, you can pull it off and set it aside. Now that we have the kick plate off, we can take out the water filter housing. We're going to use our quarter inch nut driver to take out the screw that holds this little bracket to the cabinet. Now that you have that out, we can use our 5 16 nut driver to take out the two lower screws. Now that you have the screws out, you can carefully pull the water filter housing out. And you want to keep the water lines turned up so the water doesn't drain out while you have it out. Once you have it out, you can set it aside. Once you have the water filter housing out of the way, we're going to reach in and take this foam block out of the way. Now that we have the foam block out of the way, we can reach in with the razor blade and cut the tape that holds the defrost drain pan to the cabinet. Once you have that cut, we can reach in and carefully pull it out. Once you have the defrost drain pan free, you can pull it out of the refrigerator. Here's the old defrost drain pan next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. Looks like they made the new one a little bit smaller, but it'll go in and work fine. To put the drain pan in, we're just going to carefully feed it back into position. Once you have it in place, we can tape it down. To put the foam block in, we're going to put it in with this angled piece right in this corner. So it sits down onto the bottom of the refrigerator correctly. Once you have it in place, we can carefully slide the water filter housing back in. We're going to carefully feed the water lines back. And 
And then we can use our 5 16 nut driver to put the screws in. And then we can use our quarter inch nut driver to put the screw in that holds this bracket to the cabinet. Now that we have the water filter housing reinstalled, we can put the kick plate back on. To put the kick plate back on, all you have to do is line everything up and lift it in place and then snap the retaining clips in on each end. Now that we have the kick plate installed, we can close both doors and go around the back of the refrigerator. Now that we're around back, we can tape the other end of the defrost drain pan down. All you have to do is reach in and tape it down to the bottom. Now we can reach back and grab the two water lines so we can reconnect them to the water valve. We have the water line that doesn't have any fitting on the end of it. It's just going to plug into the water valve here. All you have to do is push it down until it locks in. And then we can grab the other water line that has the fitting on the end, and that goes up into this fitting here. Once you have both water lines reconnected, we can clear all the wires and carefully push the water valve back in. Once you have it in place, we can use the quarter inch nut driver to put the screws in. Once you have the water valve mounted, we can put the back cover on. Remember, anytime you have the back cover off, you want to take the opportunity to clean off the compressor and all the lines very carefully. Also the condenser motor and all the copper lines. You want to be careful that you don't damage anything, but you want to clean it up so that the refrigerator can run as efficiently as possible. To put the cover on, we're just going to put it on each side of the water valve, top and bottom. You want to make sure the top of the cover goes up into this channel. Once you have it in place, we can go around and put all the screws in with our quarter inch nut driver. Now that we have the cover back in place, we can turn the water back on, plug the refrigerator back in, and make sure it starts to cool. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.